Right, so you've gone through three years of college, potentially gone on to do a master's, and you cannot land a job after doing computer science. I'm going to tell you why you can't land the job, what you should have done differently, and for the people who are currently at university, how you can make sure you don't make the same mistakes other people do in a really bad job market. And for the people that are struggling to land a job, I'm going to show you some pointers on how you may be able to get a job. Now, straight off the bat, a lot of your resumes suck. I have to be honest, I've seen them on subreddits where people post their resume anonymously and they are really bad. And it's quite amazing that universities aren't giving you tips on how to write resumes correctly. So you need to have name, email and contact number at the top. I can't believe some people don't even have all of those three. The amount of people I've seen without an email address or a mobile number is quite frankly ridiculous. If you have a GitHub, put a GitHub link and a LinkedIn. The LinkedIn isn't really necessary unless you're not someone who's like crazy posting all the time, but sometimes it's just easy for recruiters to have that so they can connect to a future in case any other opportunities come up. Now, the amount of people that have their technical skills at the bottom of their resume is astounding. They need to be at the top. On average, a recruiter is going to look at a resume for less than maybe five seconds. So if they're at the bottom, they may not have even made it that far. And do not have so many skills. Like if you're a graduate, you're not going to have Python, Go, Java, CSS, HTML, and Rust. It's just physically not possible. So pick a stack on your resume and make sure you actually, you understand it and you become good at it in the time that you're learning. And don't put stuff like Agile or Scrum, because more than likely, if you haven't done an internship, you haven't worked in that framework. Unless you've really gone and taken a certification on that in your own spare time, fair enough, you can put it on there. But don't forget things like GitLab, Azure DevOps, all of the other normal tooling that you would use as an engineer, you have stuff like Docker as well. And then you're going to have your experience right below your technical skills. So that's going to be your internships or any jobs that you did throughout college. Now, if you did not do an internship, I personally don't think you should have your job at Starbucks on there that you did throughout college on the weekends. Realistically, it's not really relevant at all. And most hiring managers really don't care in tech. Like we're really not that bothered on transferable skills far too much especially if it's just a regular like customer service job like that. If you were coming from like a different field, maybe you worked in finance and you were like an accountant, like fair enough, or maybe you were in a different STEM degree, there's probably more chance of transferable skills. If you didn't do an internship, put it on there because it shows you actually got the effort to go to a job. Then after that, any projects that you've done in your spare time. Sorry, I totally forgot. At the top as well, just about technical skills, put like a one or two liner just to say who you are, what you want to do, what you've done recently uh, at college and of course don't forget to put your grades on there as well now the second point really is the internships if you went through all those years of college and you just partied during the summer and you did not do an internship you've automatically put yourself at a disadvantage if you're watching this and you're currently at university please do an internship because nine times out of ten you're probably going to be hired over someone who hasn't done one i think actually getting the experience of an internship is more important than your grade like most people that go to university in the UK anyway, they get a 2-1. I'm not sure what the equivalent is in the US. But if you have 10 people with 2-1s and 2 people did internships, they're going to be hired over the people with 2-1s. Unless you're an absolute god mathematically, your brain is at the IQ of Einstein and you get a first and you land a job at somewhere like Jane Street. That's kind of possible without an internship. Now, if you are at university and you don't want to do an internship, now, my next point is going to be leaning on to the projects, right? Because putting projects on your resume is very good for someone with that experience. Do not waste your time building a calculator, building a vending machine, building a basic web app. These are things that everyone has already done, and that is not going to make you stand out. The amount of people that apply to jobs and they've all done the same projects just from following a tutorial online is kind of ridiculous. I know I'm being kind of cutthroat, but a lot of you guys really need to hear this. Because if you do not listen, you're still going to struggle landing a job. Now, the experience that you're going to gain by with a group of friends trying to build a startup, let's say there's three or four of you, it shows you can work in a team, shows you can build a product, shows you can have ideas, shows you can host a product, and perhaps maybe you gain some users, it shows how you can scale that product. But that, in my opinion, holds so much more weight on a resume and in an interview. So if someone says to you, oh, tell me how you built your calculator, it's just pointless, like who cares? Or if someone says you built a startup with four friends, what it was, how you did it, what your plan was, how you designed it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that really goes a lot further than just talking about some shitty calculator. So you really need to build projects of value. Le now the next point is leak code is obviously important, especially if you want to go into software engineering. In the field I work in, uh, which is more sort of cloud and DevOps, it does come up sometimes, but not as much as software engineering from what I understand from my friends who work in software engineering. 
So absolutely practice your lead code. Um, and make sure you look into companies online to see difficulty they make you do leak code. Do they even make you do leak code? But definitely focus on it. But in my opinion, for the people that hire graduates and young people, they really want to make sure you're capable and you actually know how to talk. You need to remember that a hiring manager wants to want to work with you. Now, if I don't want to work with you, I'm not going to hire you. If you turn up to an interview, you don't know how to communicate, you don't know how to talk to me, and it doesn't flow smoothly over someone else, they're gonna get hired. You know, jobs aren't just about being a good engineer. It's about actually creating working relationships. Being an engineer isn't just coding, it's writing code, knowing how to build a product, how to sell a product, speak to clients, speak to other people in the business. And people that can master that are the engineers that go on to earn the most money because they are better than people that just write code, just build stuff. Now this sort of information for people at such a young age, like I've been working in tech for 10 years now. If I knew all of this when I was like 21 years old, I would have done things way differently. But that's just part of life. You have to go through life learning. But if you can learn from someone else who's already been through it, even better, because you can pick things up that you wouldn't pick up that fast. And the next point I want to talk about is networking. Is it worth it? Is it going to bring anything to you? Now, for the most part, unless you're kind of an extrovert, networking is kind of pointless. Like the amount of people I've seen at networking events that just don't even talk to anyone, it's just a waste of time. Now, if you can find networking events in your area, more than welcome to say, go ahead and go to them. You don't know what might happen. I once worked for a consultancy where a guy turned up who was, he had, didn't have a computer science degree, he was just doing home learning, he was actually a chef, and he did get hired and put through a boot camp internally at the company to become an engineer. Now, those opportunities are very slim, but possible, so I'm not going to rank that very high. But definitely go to networking events at university, join clubs, stuff like that to gain other sort of life experiences. Now, in my opinion, that is the best advice I can give a computer science graduate on how to land a job. And the other thing that I think is very important is remember that software engineering is not the only job. When I speak to graduates, they seem to only want to be a software engineer because they think it pays the most money. I think in the US, that's probably fair enough. But in Europe and the UK, that is not always the case. Cloud engineering, DevOps engineering, data engineering pays pretty much the same and sometimes more. And also it comes down to what's in demand. And in the UK at the moment, the job market for software engineers probably is not as good as those other roles. Now, I really hope this has been value to you guys because it's quite bad to see so many people not able to land jobs, so constantly sending off resumes and not hearing back. But you do need to understand we are in a bad job market. The cost of living is extremely high. That doesn't just affect us as people. It also affects businesses' cost raise on their gas, electricity and water bills. It's going to cause shortages. And it isn't just that, you know, we've had volatile government changes and a lot of technology companies do actually rely on public sectors as their clients. So if the public sectors aren't spending money on private companies, not as many jobs and contracts are going to be flowing through. We've also got proxy wars like in Ukraine and Russia that also causes economic conflicts for everyone. Things are certainly starting to pick up and there is light at the end of the tunnel, but it is still going to be slow. But there are ways that you can build advantages to enable you to land a job over someone else. And if you can put in that extra 10% of effort compared to someone else, I can totally believe that you will reap the rewards. As always, thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It really does help out the channel.